Hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your health and fitness and mindset from where you are to being unstoppable. And today, the day of recording this, it's the 28th of December 2020 in Melbourne, Australia. And this is a time of the year where many of us are perhaps on leave, maybe until early January, maybe till the second week in January. And I find that it can be a bit of a funky time where you are not really sure what you should be doing, you're catching up with family, you're eating food that you don't normally eat, uh, maybe drinking too much, uh, you're catching up with families, uh, traveling a lot further away perhaps, and life is just different to what you're used to knowing. So it's the it's not like you're maybe on holidays, but you are certainly not in the normal routine of your day-to-day work and that busyness. So it can feel a bit funny. It's like, oh, well, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Um, you're eating different foods. You're feeling a bit, oh, man, maybe you've got a hangover. Maybe you're feeling bloated. Um, you're just out of, you're out of sequence. You know, you, I'm sure many of you will know what I'm talking about. Now, we're all different, of course, but today's topic is about creating the perfect routine for you. So with this time that we've got right now, because even me, like I was up at 4.30 a.m. this morning uh, to be working with clients. So it's a public holiday here, uh, but I am working uh, with clients. I've tried to uh, face-to-face work, get it all done before lunchtime, and then I can spend the rest of the day uh, doing creative work and doing some, some other things with my, my business, but then also um, acknowledging the fact that I do need to be resting as well and taking a bit of a break. So I'm taking a bit of an, um, you know, where I'm normally working a 16-hour day, maybe today I'll only work a 10-hour 10, a 10 day, something like that. Um, so it's still, for me, a way of giving back to me. Um, so even I have got more time. I've got more clients that are away at the moment. So there's just a more time in my schedule to be doing some other things. So I'm sure that many of you are like that as well. So what I want you to start thinking about is creating your perfect route routine. What would that look like in every sense of the word? You've got some more time right now. So why not think about how would you create your perfect routine in your day? Now, if you say, well, what are you talking about routine? Think about every aspect of your life. What would be the perfect routine? Think about your exercise. Think about your food. Think about the time that you spend with your family, your partner. Think about what you're doing at work. Thinking about your business, how you're structuring your day, etc., etc. Think about all of those things. Now, I want you to take away all restrictions that you perceive, that you have. And I want you to create what would be your perfect day, what would be your perfect routine in terms of how you would do things. So that's step number one. I've got eight steps here. That's step number one. So for me, for instance, in a perfect scenario, now I can't do this all the time, but um, a perfect scenario for me would be getting up before sunrise, going and doing my cardio. For me, which is walking, I'd be getting up and going for a walk. Ideally, it would be outside um, and maybe I could see the sunrise. Um, But yes, that would be the first thing that I would do. I would come back home, I would be having uh, having my breakfast, I would then be uh, setting myself up for success for the day. What does that mean? That means I'm looking at um, creating a, a plan for my day of what are the outcomes that I want to achieve today. I'd be then making sure that I've uh, scheduled or blocked out those things in my calendar um, to make sure that I was working on them for the day and getting all of those things scheduled so I can set myself up for success, knowing that, okay, if I do all of these things today, that's going to be a great day. That would be the, um, the next thing that I'd be doing. I'd also be, maybe I was out walking, I'd be listening to something that was going to be uplifting for me, something that was going to inspire me, educate me, motivate me. 
I'd be listening to that, some sort of podcast or a program or something like that. I'd be getting that done. Um, so you've got the idea. So I'm, I'm working through my whole day, working out what does that look like for me? How would I make it successful? And they'd be uh, certainly the elements that I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at also, where am I getting in my strength training? When am I going to do that? Uh, because that's a critical part for me. Have I got that blocked out in my calendar? What are my appointments for the whole week? Am I getting enough done? Am I growing my business? What are the strategic things that I'm going to be doing? What, you know, and I just go through each element of what I would set myself up for success. Certain parts of the day where I'd maybe post on my um, you know, social media side of things because I find I need to do that, get that right at the start of the day because by the end of the day, I really can't be bothered doing that. Uh, making sure that the, the key parts of the, the day, my mornings, normally where I'm most creative, that's when I want to be creating um, you know, like new marketing campaigns, doing certain things that require a lot of creative energy for me, maybe when, whether it's writing, um, doing those tasks that just require a different part of me. Uh, when it comes to uh, also spending time with my family, I'd be looking at, okay, so when's a good time to be spending this time with the, the kids? Um, doing some exercise with the kids, doing all that kind. In a perfect world, I would like to be, um, you know, every couple of days going to exercise with the kids, like just going out for a walk. We all do that together, just sharing things. Uh, the later part of the day, also sharing things with the kids and having experiences, uh, making sure I'm remaining connected with them, etc., uh, etc. Et so you've got the idea. It's going to look different for me than it is for you. For you, you, know, you might say your perfect routine is not to work. Well, for me, my perfect routine includes work because it's a really important part of me and what it is that I do. So that's a really important, important part. So then the next step of this process, once you've done that, and that might take some time, well, it will take some time, I would say set yourself seven minutes. I find seven minute blocks can work well. It's kind of like a brainstorming session. Get out a sheet of paper, or write it on your computer or something. I find that maybe this can be faster on the whiteboard or um, a, a notebook or something. And just write, what would your perfect day look like? What would your perfect routine be? Think about the people you're spending time with, your career, uh, your health, your fitness, your food, all of those things. Think, think about all of that and write it out. Step two is then to write down, so what are you doing now? How are you spending your time now? Because the way that I've worded that question, the first one, is the chances are you are not living that right now. You're not living the perfect routine, the perfect day right now. We've all got opportunities to improve what it is that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So then once you've done that, step three is really just like A minus B. Where are your gaps? What, where, how far away are you from what you're doing right now to where it is that you want to get to? And so once we've worked out what those gaps are, we then need to take action, which is step four, about let's act to take those gaps and eliminate them. What do we need to do to eliminate those gaps? Maybe it means you need to get up earlier to start doing things. One of the things that I found about three years ago now was that I was becoming, I'm a very... The, I'm not a stressed person. I'm very level-headed. I'm very cool and calm. But I was finding what was stressing me constantly at night time was, like keeping me awake, was the number of things that I had to do the next day and knowing that I wasn't going to get them done because I didn't have enough time. So the first thing I thought was, well, how can I solve this immediately? I can get up earlier. And then I can do more planning. I can work out how I can delegate and do all those things. Uh, but it was, it was just overwhelming me. I was adding more things to do to my, my list. My book was getting further away from being written. And it was just frustrating me. And then that was flowing over into other areas of my life too. I was just getting more, uh, more wound up. And uh, my workouts weren't as effective. My relationships weren't as deep and connecting either. 
And so it just shows up everywhere. You know what it's like when you have that extra, extra burden that you're carrying around. So once you can work out what it is that you need to do, if it is getting up earlier, if it's um, like what I said before, setting your day up from the very beginning by saying, what are the outcomes that I want to achieve today? And the measure of that is, how do I know whether you've got that right? Well, if you get to the end, of this, do this at the start of the day. If you then look back at that list and say, gee, if I get all of those things done today, and maybe I suggest that there's only like four big things on there, no more than four. If you did those things by the end of today, would today be great for you? And if you could say yes, then you know you've got it right. If you say, no, no, it's really just a to-do list, then you haven't got it right. You've got to think more deeply about what it is that you want as your outcome for the day. So, for instance, if I use the, the kids is normally something that's easier for people to relate to. I don't want to, well, let's just say that mine was about um, going for a walk with the kids. The outcome is not to walk with the kids. The outcome is to connect with my children, to share the love, build that bond, build that relationship. That's what my outcome is. It's not to just go for a walk, but you could go for a walk and they're listening to their music and we're all listening to our music and we're just, you know, we're just together. That's, that's not it. That might be part of it, but it's the connection part that's really, really important. So. Um, that's what I want you to, to work out because then it might be just a case of uh, just scheduling those things in your calendar and you know that, well, actually, yeah, right now I'm not scheduling any of those things. I'm not going through that process. I'm not starting my day that way and I'm finding by mid-morning that I'm really lacking in energy and lacking in direction and I'm getting uh, pulled in every direction because of emails and because of social media and because of all of those things. Again, a, a few years ago, what I decided to do was not open email first thing in the morning, not look at social media first thing in the morning. Only look at my emails about maybe two to four times a day. That's it. If something comes in in between, then it needs to wait until I get to it the next time. I have a little footer on the bottom of all the emails that I send that I only check my emails twice a day. And so that sets people up knowing that, well, there's a chance that I'm not going to get back to you immediately, but I will get back to you today. So simple little things like that can just remove the clutter from your mind and start to just almost like put things in filing cabinets and you can open the drawer and pull the things out when you want to. Um, and that's certainly worked really well for me. So step number five is, so you've, well, number four was you're taking the action, right? You've worked out what it is that you need to do to close those gaps. So step number five is now let's test it out. How's that all working? So you go through the process of scheduling everything, you've written down your outcomes and everything. Normally when people adopt a new behavior, it might only last a few days before you start to slip away from it. I see this a lot with people that are tracking their food and they might do it for three or four days, even a week, but then it starts to slip away because I'll start to see it in their results. Or maybe it's after two weeks or three weeks. But at some point, it starts to wane a little bit. And you're like, okay, what's happening in your life to be able to, you know, for you to, to stop doing what it was that you were doing? Because we become lazy. We become, I guess, just used to not doing something continuously that is going to give us high performance. So yeah, we, we get up and we do, we eat food and we go to work and everything, but we're talking about moving your life forward at a greater speed and achieving a greater level of success. And if you are constantly testing and measuring everything that you're doing, then you're going to get there faster. 
And so this is why when you put in place any new behavior, you want to test it out and see whether it's working. I give you a good example of me, what I spoke to you about, about uh, my outcomes. Um, so you've all heard of, uh, I'm assuming, Brendan Burchard. So Brendan Burchard, I don't know, it was 12 months or more ago, probably a couple of years ago now, he came out with this new planning journal and it was a hard, hard copy uh, version of it. And it worked in, I think it was in quarters, so uh, one for three months of the year. Uh, so I ended up getting one, so I thought, oh yeah, it sounds like a really good idea. And I, I got it and I looked at it and I thought, wow, these are all the things uh, you know, that he wants you to do each day, each week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, now, I did it for a week. It might have only been three or four days, actually. And it wasn't doing it for me. I was finding I was spending more time uh, you know, filling out the, the bits of paper and I wasn't getting the outcomes that I really wanted. I found that there was a lot of repetition. Uh, it, just, it just didn't work for me. And I've, d- I've tried a, a number of different systems before. I've used Tony Robbins' system as well for, uh, for time managing time. And there's components of that that I've used and still use, but I don't use the whole thing. Uh, so you've got to kind of find, find what it is that works for you. If it's completely not working for you, well, you've got to maybe push yourself a bit and say, well, am I just being critical here? Am I being lazy because it's different? Or is it really not working for me? How, can I come up with a, a better solution? And so that's what I did. I came up with a hybrid solution that works for me. It's very efficient. I do it once a day and I get the outcomes that, that I'm wanting. Uh, from doing it. So you work out your own. That's why you've got to test things. And then step six is about you, if it's not working for you, change it. So like I did, I've done these time management things before. I thought, but yeah, that's not working for me. That, I don't work like that. So I'm going to do it with this twist and uh, yeah, do it that way. Now that's not to say that you, you should tweak everything because there are some things that you know, they've been done by incredibly successful people. Obviously, it's worked for them. And should you not just challenge yourself to, uh, you know, push through some barriers that you create for yourself so that you can, you know, see the benefit of doing something uh, that the expert has, has said. So you've got to weigh, weigh that up a little bit because many of us just give up too easily. And... I guess the reason that I stopped with the Brendan Burchard example was because I'd done a number before and I could see that it was, you know, like a bit like this and a bit like that, uh, but it just wasn't me. It just didn't, just didn't agree with me. I thought, I'm going to waste my time with this. It doesn't drive me. And I think that's the thing. If when, like the little simple model that I explained before that I use, um, it, it's quick it's easy to do and it drives me and I'm excited about doing it because I know that when I do that, I create my outcomes, I then schedule them and I keep sticking to that all day. I know when I get to the end of the day that I feel good because I've accomplished those outcomes and I've conditioned myself to putting better quality outcomes on there so that when I do get to the end of the day and look back, I say, actually, yeah, that, I feel good with that. That's good. I've had a good day. I've done I've done what I said that I wanted to and that feels good because none of us want to go through the day, be super busy, get home and say, I didn't do anything. I didn't feel like I accomplished anything today. You know what that's like. I mean, right now for me, uh, when I compare what it was like uh, through COVID and lockdown and I had a lot more free t- freer time, I was creating a lot more things. And when you're creating things, for me, that makes me feel good. And I felt like, wow, look at all this that I'm doing. This is fantastic. I'm creating new things that are going to benefit people anywhere in the world. That feels really good. Right now, I'm not meeting that same need within me and that doesn't feel as good. So I've got to work out some changes over these next few days that I'm going to do so that I can achieve those things. And that's one of my things on my outcome list for today. So that's step six. Make the changes. 
Step seven, once you've made those changes, re-implement and assess. Like when I first started doing that process I just outlined, uh, I didn't get it right straight away and I had to change some things. I made it too complex for me to start with. It took too long. And now I find if I take 15 minutes at the start of my day and do all those things and set myself up, then I find that really works. I also find that where I go through periods of time where I don't listen to podcasts and don't listen to those messages, I find I am definitely not as driven. So I've got to make sure that I schedule that time as well because I want to always be driven. I want to continuously listen to new content, continuously look to improve myself and implement change. And that's what step seven is about. Re-implement, reassess again, And the last step is then you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it over and over again and you'll find that uh, you'll tweak some things here and now. The key is about coming up with that perfect routine for you that inspires you, that drives you, that gives you the results and keeps on delivering. That for me has taken me probably 30 years to get to that position where I I know the things that work for me and I know as soon as I take out certain elements, that's when my performance starts to drop. So for instance, um, if I take out my 10,000 steps a day, if I'm not getting in 10,000 steps a day, after about three days, if I'm down around the the 5,000 to 7,000 mark, I find that I start to develop a pain through my right glute and it goes down into my hamstring. And what does that do? That causes me to not sleep as well. I toss and turn, I'm in a lot of pain, which means that I'm then not energized and refreshed in the coming days. And so I know that I need to do that. I know that if I don't work out, say I didn't work out for a week, I would go crazy. I mean, I I literally don't feel like I'm myself. I don't feel good, I don't feel energized, I don't feel focused, I don't feel like I'm bringing my best self forward. And then that that starts to show up in other ways. I can feel grumpier, I can be short with the kids, I can be um, not the best coach in the world. Uh, So I know that they are warning signs for me that I need to get those things done. I know that when I don't set myself up for success each day, guess what, each day is not a success. When I don't listen to the right messages, the right content, then again, I'm not creating the best version of myself. I know when I don't eat the right foods, then that also shows up in me in many different ways that I don't like. So I've conditioned myself over a long period of time to know this, when I do X, Y, Z here, that's when I'm performing at my best. The trick is for you to find out what yours is. Now, you're not going to know until you start experimenting with this. The first thing to do is, like I said, describe what your perfect day would look like. What's that perfect routine? And then it's about creating that routine, practicing it, making some changes, keep going until you get to that point where you know, yes, this is what it is. And then over time, you might find that that changes a bit because the things that are you know, once in your perfect routine, so like my girls, for instance, um, they're gonna to get to the stage where they become adults, they move out, and I'm not going to have the daily, well, the type of daily interaction that I do right now. I can still call them and do all those things, but the reality is it probably won't be every day, and it's different to when you're in person and giving them a hug and a cuddle and all that sort of stuff. So over time, that part of my routine will change the nature of my workouts will probably change as well. Uh, So everything is subject to change. The point is that you need to keep evolving and create that perfect routine and environment for you so that you can perform at your optimum. I'm suggesting this now because you're going to have some space most likely away from your normal hustle and bustle. So let's take that time out to think about creating this now so that when we get to 2021, when you get to going back to work and doing all those things, then you can start to 
get this year or next year off to a flyer because you're creating these new routines which are just putting a, a more productive, more efficient, better version of you forward. If you want to have more of a discussion on this, you can go to the mentaltoughnessandbodyshow.com. You can opt in for a free consultation with me there. Love to have a connection with you. And in the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you tomorrow.